Hey everyone, this is Robert with Exploring the Local Life. Today we're going to be doing an oil change on our Champion 3500 watt gasoline and 3150 starting watt propane dual fuel generator. This will be our 100 hour oil change. First things first, you have to do a few things. You want to have your oil warm when you do your oil change. So first off, make sure you've run your generator or turn it on for a few minutes. That way the oil will have recirculated and be ready to go with a lot of the dirt that it wants to drain out of. Also, you'll want a funnel, a large screwdriver. Don't get a little narrow tip screwdriver, a nice solid one. You'll want a 12 millimeter socket and ratchet set. If you have an extension, a large extension, please use that because you're going to need it. And of course, the ratchet. Towel to wipe up stuff because it's going to happen. And of course, an oil pan, which I have down here to catch any oil. Now, the generator weighs 100 pounds, so make sure you have good shoes on and are able to lift the weight or move it around as needed. I have it on the back rack of our travel trailer. Uh, we don't typically keep it back here unless we're mobile in a park where we don't need it. Otherwise, it's in the back of the truck or sitting on the ground. So make sure you keep your back straight, use your knees to lift, and turn it around. Here we go. Accessing the uh, engine is very simple. There's just two screws that you have to unscrew with either a Phillips head or a uh, standard flat head. So we just unscrew those nearly all the way. And it just pulls out. There's two notches. And you have access to the engine. Here's the oil fill. And here is the drain plug. Okay, so let's point out some of the important things that we will be working with today. We have our oil fill, which also has a little measuring stick on it. We all have our drain plug bolt, which the first time that I had to do this oil change was on so hard that I literally snapped a tool in half. Um, when it comes to the factory, it's extremely stiff. So make sure you uh, have a nice long extension so you're not putting any torque uh, on your little tools. And uh, that way you'll be able to get it out. Champion also has this little flap that covers a drain area, so you'll be able to tilt it without having to worry about how do I get a drain um, pan underneath this bolt. It'll just go straight out through the hole down there. Um, there's also this nice little drip catch for when you do put oil in it that'll catch a little bit of oil that you'll be able to scoop up real quick. Again, way down below, I have an oil pan to catch any oil that we have. I'm gonna start off just by pulling off the drain plug. Excuse me, the, I'm gonna start by taking out the fill point setting that aside so that's been set aside we don't want of course stuff falling in there looks like we've had some good oil usage and now so even now I don't have the right setup I have two short extensions when I should just have one long extension but we'll make it work yeah much easier than the first time I literally again snapped an extension tool small extension tool just trying to get this bolt off I don't remember if it's going to start draining oil immediately or if I have to tilt it first, but I'm guessing we're going to start. Yep, there it goes. I don't see any metal on the plug. I think it's magnetic. I would hope it's magnetic. I can't confirm that. Again, I'm going to put this to the side as well. Oh, I'm going to tilt this over. So I'm just holding onto one of the two extremely convenient carry handles that the Champion comes with. And I'm also losing oil here. That's not convenient. Live and learn. All right, knowing that I might lose some oil out of the fill plug, I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in. Okay. Now we're gonna really heal it over to get as much oil out of there as possible. All right, so I cleaned a little bit of this oil that had been sitting there. So again, I'm gonna heal this up and over as much as I can. Okay, we're at greater than 60 degrees and nothing's coming out. Even more, here we go. 
now I'm at 90 degrees and there is no more oil coming out of the engine, so pretty secure that we are done with draining. Okay, so now we've drained the oil, we're gonna put the oil plug back in. So I'm just spinning it by hand until I get to the base. Okay, I don't have any torque specifications, I believe, so I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and snug. Especially when the factory it came, it was like break your arms hard on there. Okay, nice and snug, it's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna close this flap, which I forgot to do last time, so I had a bunch of leaves and dirt in here. There we go, snaps in. So we're supposed to put up to 0.6 liters of oil in here. I'm gonna clean this off. Now, the difference between the manual and what we're presented here with, here we have a full indication on the dipstick. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and use as opposed to what's in the manual. But in any event, if I'm putting in one quart of oil, I'm putting in too much. All right, so today we're putting in Castrol GTX 10W30. The 10W30 uh, weight is what they recommend for typical operating conditions. If you are in cold environments, 5W30. If you're hot and hot and hard use environments, they have another recommendation. Check your owner's manual. But again, I don't really care what kind of oil I use as long as it's high quality 10W30. This is one liter, and we're supposed to put about 60% uh, of that, 0.6 liter. And so, of course, this is in quarters instead of thirds, but we have our oil level up here. Here we go. That's one quarter of the bottle. All right, we're gonna check where we are on the dipstick. Yeah, looks like we're up to the full measure. Now the instructions say on the dipstick, do not screw it in to get your level. So I'm just gonna put it in without screwing it in. Yep, and we're right at the F of the full mark. So we're done there. Make sure this is nice and tight without overturning it. That's the main thing with engines, just don't over tighten. There we go, that's nice and firm. We're good there. Gonna wipe things down a little bit. Have a little bit of oil here in between the seam here, but that's just from our drain of the oil, when we drain the oil. Okay, so we're good. We have oil, we have our oil plugged back in, we are set there, and then we can close it up. Okay, so putting the cover back on is very simple. You have these two notches go in the base of the cover, push it up, and just screw everything back together again. And we're done. All right, let's see if it'll run. We have an oil level warning here. Yeah.